there's some good news and some bad news for the Ford Maverick, the small truck that they are coming out with. The good news is that they have a massive number of orders. The bad news is they won't sell one to you. My name is Eric and this is RevMatch TV and I have one important thing to ask from you. If you like this kind of content, please consider subscribing. It really helps the channel stay alive. So here we are over at Ford.com. So when the Maverick debuted, the estimated MPG was 40 miles per gallon in the city. Now there are two different engines available on the Maverick. There is a hybrid, which is the uh, default, the, uh, the base engine that you can get. It's not the option. And then there's an optional two liter engine, which makes more horsepower. We'll look at the specs in just a second. But here is the good news. So the EPA now estimates that the MPG in the city is gonna be 42 miles per gallon. It's up two miles per gallon over what they originally estimated. And Ford is saying it is now America's most fuel efficient hybrid truck. But the, the sort of the good news, let's talk about the good news first, it continues. So it's a two and a half liter hybrid and it has an estimated MPG combined of 37, 33 highway and more than 500 miles of range on the tank. And what's really significant is that we are seeing a shift away from passenger cars right now. And actually this is a, a small truck. It's not super tiny by any means, but what's really interesting here is that Ford says that it gets better gas mileage than the 1.5 liter Honda Civic. Our team set out to redefine what a truck could be with the Maverick and we've done that with an EPA estimate 42 MPG that beats out the 2022 Honda Civic 1.5 liter four cylinder automatic with the CVT. Now let's see if that's actually true. So let's cruise over here to the Honda Media website and we can check out the MPG, see if this is actually accurate. So there's four different trim levels here and you get the 1.5 liter turbo in the top two trim levels. By the way, I just had a sample of the Civic sedan. I'm reviewing it. Actually, I reviewed it. I'm doing an edit right now. I'll have that up soon. So we can see that the uh, the EX gets 33 in the city, 42 highway, and 36 combined. So by my calculations, 42 is a lot higher than 33. So how many orders do they have on the Maverick? So if we go over to mustangtruckclub.com, they are stating, this is some uh, reports actually that have been uh, widely circulated. The new Maverick has 100,000 reservations with strong demand in California, Texas, and Florida. Uh, so far they've made about 1,300 of them. This is as of August and the target production, or rather the production for the year to date is about 1,700. So they got 100,000 reservations. So this thing is going to sell like hotcakes. So what exactly is the Ford Maverick? So if you've been hiding under a rock, it is Ford's newest pickup that they announced just recently. And it is in fact their smallest pickup. So Ford is going all in on pickup trucks. So how big is the Maverick here? So this is a Ford graphic and they're comparing it to their own products. So we can see that the, uh, the Ford Maverick is about 200 inches long compared to the Ranger, which is about 211 inches long. So it's about 11 inches, give or take 12 inches longer than the Ranger. Sorry for my slightly bad math. Feel free to flame me for that. And then there's the F-150, which is 232 inches, let's call it. So it's about 32 inches bigger than the Maverick. So the Maverick is indeed a fairly compact pickup truck. And it is a three quarter ton pickup truck. It can uh, carry 1,500 pounds in the bed. We've been talking about saving money. We're talking about saving fuel on your potential Maverick that you might buy. And so another way of saving money is working on your own car. And so I've got a series of videos on torque wrenches and I like this Lexavon product. They sent this to me. So I've been using these torque wrenches quite a bit on my own car. These are nice quality. They're quite inexpensive. They're called Lexavon. They're black powder coated and they're definitely no more, more expensive than the stuff that you get at Harbor Freight. And I've got a link down below. You can get them on Amazon. I will get a, a slight commission for these, but go check them out if you like to work in your own car. And I've also got some videos on how to use a torque wrench. So a little bit more context on the Maverick and the size of the bed. So I'm over here at autoblog.com. They did an analysis of the graphic. They did the math. It's 11.1 .1 inches shorter. Thank you, Autoblog. Thank you, internet. And so the Maverick bed is 4.5 feet long. 
and in the uh, the F-150, or rather in the Ranger Super Crew, it's a five-foot bed. So here's another example here. I'm over at Bob Allen Ford, which is a Ford dealer. I don't know what the 9130 area code is, but uh, we can compare it to the F-150. And so the shortest bed in the regular bed is the 5.5-foot bed, which I think is actually the same as we're getting in the F-150 Lightning. I've got a video on that if you want to check that out. So in the XL, for example, it goes from 5.5 to 6.5 to 8 feet long. So you can get various bed sizes. So compared to the F-150 is about a foot shorter than that in terms of the bed. This compact pickup truck market is actually really kind of heating up and is becoming a new segment as people move away from cars. The closest competitor right now I can really think of is another one too, which is the Honda Ridgeline. But here we are at the brand new Hyundai Santa Cruz for 2022. And now let's compare the MPG on that versus the Maverick we were just talking about that gets 42 city. So let's just scroll down here for the, uh, the MPG. So this of course starts at, uh, let's go over here to the left, let's get the cheapest version. It starts at $24,000 for the SE version, 23 combined, 21 city, 26 highway. So 21 city, do they have anything that does better than 21 city? Let's see, uh, this premium does 19, that is in fact worse, 19, so yeah, it's clearly getting a lot better gas mileage, and this is not a knock at the Santa Cruz, it's actually an amazing little pickup truck, but it is uh, aimed at a slightly different market, I think, than the Maverick. So the Maverick does start at about $20,000 for the XL goes all the way up to uh, 25.5 for the Lariat. So the 2.5 liter engine is the base engine in this, and that's the hybrid engine. And if you wanna move up to the two liter EcoBoost, I'll show you the specs in a second, you're gonna spend about another thousand bucks on it. I think it's the same way across the board here, the XLT, we're at 22.8, 22.3, and uh, if we move up, it's 23.4, let's call it. So about a thousand bucks more. So this is built on the uh, the same platform as the Bronco Sport, which I did a review on. Check that out. I'll put that in the description down below. Really great off-road truck, by the way. I took it off-road and it's very capable. So it's built in Mexico, in Hermosillo, Mexico. And that's actually the same assembly plant that builds the um, Mustang Mach-E. So the 2.5 liter hybrid, the FHEV, this is what they call a full hybrid. So it's not a plug-in hybrid. This, you don't need to plug it in. You just drive it around like, like a Prius, basically. And it generates its uh, own electricity from the engine. It's a, a four-cylinder course with an Atkinson cycle engine that is more efficient. And actually it turns out uh, the manufacturing, so it's the final assembly is in Hermosillo, Mexico. but um, depending on the engine you're going to get, it could start, the manufacturing location could be in Chihuahua or in uh, Cleveland or Valencia, Spain. So just FYI. Anyways, back to the engine here. It makes 162 horsepower, 5600 RPM, and the torque is 155. Combined output is 191. So if you upgrade to the 2 liter engine, which might be your only choice, we're going to get to that in just a second here. You're looking at 250 horsepower, 277 pound-feet of torque, way more torque. This is gonna be a definitely a more capable vehicle, but the MPG is, is nowhere near as good. If we scroll down to the bottom here and look, look at the MPG, so on the EcoBoost, we're looking at uh, 23 city, 30 highway, and 26 combined, so nowhere near as good. You can get this available in uh, front-wheel drive and all-wheel drive variants, too. So 100,000 orders is actually a pretty good number of orders for a, a brand new truck. I mean, let's uh, let's give credit where credit's due. Over here at the Detroit Free Press, there's a little bit of a comment from uh, John McElroy, who is an industry analyst, and he hosts uh, Autoline Af After Hours. And he says, uh, this smashes the paradigm for a truck, for a pickup truck to start around $20,000 and get 40 miles to the gallon. When you tell that to a regular, people, they flip out, their eyes light up, and now it's 42 miles a gallon. So this actually is a big deal because there is a demand for inexpensive vehicles. The vehicles have gotten incredibly, incredibly expensive right now. And for someone to start at $20,000 and deliver that kind of gas mileage, and the base engine as a hybrid is actually, I think, pretty significant. And I think Ford really understands their audience and really is listening. Truly, there's a lot of different vehicles that you can get on the market and people love their V8s and I certainly do too. 
However, with gas at you know four dollars and something cents a gallon, I was just in Nevada recently, and it was three fifty. I think it's it's getting up there. So here's the thing. So my title was slightly clickbaity, but here's the deal. You really might not be able to buy one of these. So due to high demand, the Maverick hybrid production for the 2022 model year is expected to be fully reserved by early November. So I'm recording this on Saturday, October 23rd. And once all 2022 Maverick hybrids have been reserved, ordering for the Maverick hybrid will close until reopening next summer. So for next summer, that means you're going to be ordering a 23. So if you really want the Maverick, I suggest that you go over to the Ford website like right away or your dealer and put down a deposit in one and get one uh, ordered and get in line right now because they're going to run out of these things. The unfortunate situation right now in the auto market, in the manufacturing market, is that manufacturers just can't really crank out enough vehicles. And so why is that? Let's get into that right now. I'm over here at time.com, Time Magazine, and their website has this very good infographic about the number of chips that are used in a typical vehicle like an automobile. So where are they used? We've got blind spot detection. The engine cooling fan has a chip in it. Uh, the hybrid engine motor controller has got a chip in it. Battery management, of course. We've got oil, fuel, water pumps that are using chips, tire pressure, monitor systems, uh, security, emergency braking systems, the windows, the cameras, the lighting, the seat control, all that kind of stuff. We're talking about anywhere from 500 to 1,500 chips in a typical vehicle nowadays. So that is a heck of a lot of chips that we're dealing with. So we're back over here at the Detroit Free Press to figure out what the deal is. So they've got an article called Everything You Need to Know About the Chip Shortage That Has Been Plaguing Automakers. So of course the chips, these are made from silicon, which is a mineral that is dug up from the ground. And the chip industry is a $500 billion industry. So that is huge. This is according to the BBC and the total tech economy is worth about three billion dollars with these chips so the raw materials come from the ground and they come from japan they come from mexico and the chips are typically made in taiwan china and some are made in the u.s so here's the thing there's different kinds of chips some are faster like the ones that are in your cell phone some are going to be slower like the ones that are in your microwave and also in vehicles because uh, chips in vehicles tend to be slower uh, and one of the reasons is because you don't need a window regulator to be super, super fast for one thing. Also, the types of chips that they're using are designed more for abuse and long-term reliability, where something that's in your cell phone, you know you're going to be replacing this every year or two or three, something like that. And so when chip manufacturing started to ramp back up after the whole global pandemic situation, they started shipping chips in the higher value items like the cell phones and so forth and then that sort of created a uh, a lack of chips for automakers so as they're saying here uh, the chip capacity was consumed by other businesses phones computers video games people are working at home and school and not commuting so much so that's sort of the the basis of the chip shortage in automobiles right now so what can be done about this there's been a lot of talk of course of moving chip manufacturing to the u.s but the reality is it takes a long time to get chip manufacturing ramped up. China has got this uh, system, the supply chain system that they've had down for many, many, many years where you have factories that supply materials and different components and then they go sort of this assembly line and they go into the final chip assembly and manufacturing plant at the end of a road. And these, these, uh, these roads, these little cities are all super tightly connected and these people work in terrible conditions quite frankly in these factories to build chips really cheap and let's face it Americans don't want to work in these types of conditions and work for that little money that is just the reality of it but there are a couple of companies in the US that do this one of them is called Global Foundries this is a company based in Albany New York and it's a 15 billion dollar complex apparently and they're kind of been this company's sort of been under the radar a little bit they have this receiving dock with 256 specialty chemicals like argon and sulfuric acid and these guys cut up and they make their own silicon wafers and they end up in everything from airbags to blenders to 
headphones to fighter jets. And this is affecting the auto industry in a huge way because according to the ZDNet, the global chip shortage is still causing big problems for car makers. The auto industry is looking at a $210 billion loss. It's a consulting firm called Alix Partners, and they say they have doubled their prediction of estimated losses since May of $110 billion to $210 billion. And it's forecasting that automakers won't produce 7.7 .7 million units in 2021, up from 3.9 million units in its May forecast. So the prediction is getting worse. It's almost double. So the world's largest chip foundry, which is in Taiwan, it's called Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing Company. They supply more chips to than anybody else in the automotive industry but the auto industry only makes up 3% of its revenue. Apple makes up 20%. And this American company, Global Foundries, their car chip production account for 10% of their business. And so Global Foundries is probably going to try to pivot. Maybe some of these other companies are gonna to try to pivot, but they're gonna go where the money is. So what are auto manufacturers doing right now? This is the Detroit Free Press article again. And in the short term, they have been cutting productions of vehicles that uh, are not as much in demand and are not as profitable as SUVs and pickups. So that's why we're seeing Ford putting a lot of effort into things like the F-150, into the Bronco Sport, into the Maverick. Uh, pickups are what sell certainly at Ford. And of course, companies have been parking vehicles and putting them on the sidelines until chips become available. Companies like General Motors are not including things like the auto stop start system in some of the vehicles and some vehicles get built and they get parked and they just wait until the chips become available. Now companies like Tesla, for example, have been a little bit more nimble and they're able to reprogram their software to deal with a new chip that when it becomes available and do that in a month and that is more difficult for the legacy auto manufacturers but still even Tesla has taken out things like passenger side lumbar support so it is a global or rather an industry-wide problem right now and that is really why it's very difficult to buy a Ford Maverick with the hybrid engine if you want one. I've got a poll running on my community feed and let me know what your favorite auto manufacturer is. If you're interested in the F-150 Lightning, I've got a video on that right here. My name is Eric. See you soon.